I'm going to be trying to get some reach so I've got the extender um, I'm just going to shoot with that and the extender today I've got a completely clear sky clear blue sky not a cloud up there at all which is going to be absolutely fantastic for flight photography So the sun is just coming up now, it's just coming over the horizon. I was up at quarter to five this morning, uh, I know it's about, probably about 20 past six by now. Uh, it's just starting to break, so you can see like part of the reserve is lit, but you've still got areas in the shadows that haven't actually caught the light yet. So these are pretty much perfect conditions for flight photography. I've got the sun here, which is going to be pretty much behind me, and then up here, really nice clear blue sky, perfect backdrop. Uh, makes exposure easier as well. Now there is one duck in particular I'm hoping to get in flight which is the shoveler because I've noticed at this location they quite often kind of do circuits. I think a lot of ducks do that but they kind of do circuits now and again around what I guess is their territory particularly the males. Now I have actually seen it already uh, just when I arrived so I didn't manage to get a shot and then also tufted duck as well. Tufted duck they sometimes do the same thing. They'll be on my main candidates two ducks just flying over so they might fly around oh, if I could see and no so very simple I'm just gonna I'm gonna stand next to this tree just slightly lower down just because it's gonna break up my outline a little bit that sometimes helps if birds fly close then sometimes they can veer off Now I don't recommend this for everyone, the big 500mm f4 lens, I've got the extender on there today, also an adapter attached to the R6. Now flight photography with a big lens like this is difficult at the best of times of hand holding. Put an extender on and it gets even worse. Uh, so it does, you know, you do need really good techniques, that's, that's good for me, just to test myself a bit today. One of the great things is there's hardly any wind, there's virtually no wind at all at the moment. Uh, I was shooting the other day and the wind was just awful, it was buffeting me and the lens around, it made it just 10 times harder, but I think it's going to be a lot easier this morning without that wind. It, it's really consistent lighting, so I'm just going to set the ISO manually. Always like to do that when the lighting's consistent. Um, I'm going to go for, I'll take a guess, I'm going to go for a thousand, a thousand ISO and I'm going to check, I'm just going to look at the blue sky like directly above me. And that's giving me a shutter speed of about two thousandth of a second at f5.6. f5.6 is the widest I can get when I put the 1.4 extender on this lens. So we've got perfect conditions, but I've hardly had anything fly past me at all. Uh, had a couple of Canada geese displaying, which is already nice, a little bit far away. Might have to grab a few shots of that. Wow, I actually got something. Been here about an hour, I'm just getting nothing. Uh, there was a pair of mallards just coming along this water channel together. They were a little bit active and uh, started doing a bit of displaying. I uh, was just to start taking shots. And uh, I'm glad I did because they just came straight up and they just rose up from the water, started flying across very, very fast. Ducks are very fast flying birds. Uh, I just did my best to track it, kept the focus point on it as best I could, the, the eye focus on electronic shutter and yeah, and it was the, the female took off first. You have to make a decision, I think, on which bird you're going to go for. So I just got, thought, I'm going to go for the female. She was the first one to take off. So I tracked her. It actually did a pretty good job. And then I just sort of fell back a bit deliberately and focused on the male that was following. And uh, yeah, looking at the shots, they look like reasonably sharp. And that reminded me of the other day when I was shooting in the strong winds where it was really difficult and I was doing the same thing here with the extender and there was a pair of mallards and the male was chasing the female just going in all directions. I, I did my best to try and shoot that and I got a couple of shots which I'll put up on the screen for you. Uh, they're not pin sharp. One of them, the female, is actually pin sharp um, and then I've got the male on his own. They're not absolutely razor sharp but pretty good considering the extender and the buffeting wind. So I've actually dropped the ISO now to ISO 800, just getting a bit brighter. So as it gets brighter, I'll just probably drop the ISO a bit and then I'll have like this nice combination of uh, an ISO that's not too high, but still a fast shutter speed. Uh, I should be able to shoot most on 2,000th of a second, I think. A bit higher would probably help.
Right, I think I've sussed these tufted ducks out now. There's a pair of tufted ducks uh, that are also in this area and flying around. And they've done exactly the flight, the same flight about three times now, and I've missed it every time. I've missed like a load of flight shots today. Pretty terrible. But hopefully that pair, or maybe one of the pair, is gonna come in. It's gonna fly this way from left to right, and then come into land in kind of this little pool here. So that's what I'm waiting for. And what I have to do is make sure I'm ready for them coming in. If I'm just like looking here towards where they're landing, then I'm not gonna be quick enough. You have to give yourself more time. Ideally, you wanna know where the bird's coming from and kind of be prepared for that. So I'm kind of facing in this direction, sort of in between, just waiting for them. I've actually taken the camera off the strap um, because I just, I just don't like having anything on me. I like to just hold the camera. I don't like anything on me at all, really. But carrying it around, it just made sense with the strap. But now I've, just, I've taken it off, so I'm less restricted. I'm so pleased with that. I can't believe I actually got a shoveler then. I've just been watching them for the last 15 minutes and they were doing a couple of circuits. There was three of them flying around and they weren't giving me many opportunities, but I just kept watching, kept watching because they can very quickly get from quite far away, like right in front of you within just a few seconds. And I could see they turned around coming in my direction. I just got ready to track, uh, just tried to hold technique. And uh, the focus locked on really well that time. I think it's because I did a better job of just matching their speed and tracking. The eye focus locked on and I just kept the shutter down, firing away. I got beautiful mail, just flew uh, right to left, right in front of me. Looked on the back of the camera. Uh, some of the images are out of focus for sure, but some definitely look sharp. And I think one of the things that's not talked about enough with this type of photography is simply persistence persistence and perseverance it is really difficult you're not going to get all your pictures in focus you are going to get frustrated as i was definitely doing this morning um but just stick with it every opportunity you just want to give it your most and just try your very very best uh, and it's never over until you've left you never know just you only need that one chance hold your technique together to get one perfect shot. Just a couple of tips if you are using a big heavy lens like this one, and the first one is just putting it down. Obviously you don't wanna be carrying it the whole time. You wanna give yourself a break. Uh, now you can, if you've got a really big lens hood like this, then you can just kind of rest it on the ground as long as it's not too muddy, not too dirty. I think it's okay to do that. I do it all the time. This path at the moment is nice and dry. So just, you know, it's just one way of putting it down. And then the other tip is to use your knees sometimes. and. Uh, I was trying to film so it was easier to use a screen. So I had the screen flipped out. Uh, I was just using my knee and just tracking. So if you get low down, then do consider using your knee. So there's no doubt about it, shooting birds in flight with a big lens is always gonna be difficult, and even more so when you add an extender on there. I was shooting at 700 millimeters today, full frame, but hopefully I've shown you that it's possible with some perseverance. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, this style of in the field vlog, then check out this video up here. I've no idea what it's gonna be, but it's something to do with bird photography. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time as the camera nearly blows over. <laughs>